Hello, brothers and sisters. Pastor Danny here, wishing you a happy new year. Moses once prayed in Psalm number 90, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. As we look back and reflect upon the year 2020, we are confident and joyful to say and to know that the Lord has been with us in all the twists and turns in all the time of 2020. As difficult as it might be for us, or as hard as it might be for us even to make that confession because of all the difficulties, the trials, the tests, the temptations, the struggles, the ups, but especially the downs, the Lord has been with us. And as time now turns to another year, to a new year, the year 2021, we can also pray with Moses. So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. The Historic Christian Church on January 1st, or New Year's for us here uh, in the West, the Historic Christian Church has focused its hearts and its minds and our hearts and minds here this morning on not just the year and time, but the Lord of time, and especially on the theme of the circumcision of Christ. We'll see why in just a moment, how that's a wonderful beginning uh, to a new year. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Almighty God, who made your blessed Son to be circumcised and obedient to the law for man, grant us the true circumcision of the Spirit, that our hearts and all our members, being mortified from all worldly and carnal lusts, we may in all things obey your blessed will, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and all of God's people say, Amen. Our first reading this day is from the Epistle to the Romans, chapter number 4, verses 8 through 14. So if you have a Bible, you can turn along with me, uh, or you can simply listen as you're uh, uh, watching this video. Romans chapter 4, verses 8 through 14, where Paul uh, here, uh, this is the end of a quotation from the Old Testament Psalm of David, Psalm 32, Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. Paul then asks this question, is this blessing then only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? For we say that faith was counted to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it counted to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after, but before he was circumcised. He received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him the father of all who believe without being circumcised so that righteousness would be counted to them as well. And to make him the father of the circumcised who are not merely circumcised but who also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null, and the promise is void. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter number 2, verses 15 through 21. The Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 15 through 21. The story continues from uh, that first Christmas, the, the announcement and the birth of our Lord Jesus. When the, when the angels went away from them, uh, the shepherds, into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. And at the end of eight days, when he, Jesus, was circumcised, he was called Jesus, 
the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our secular New Year is the Christian festival of the circumcision of our Lord and Messiah, Jesus. While the world is busy waking up this morning with a hangover from their last bender of 2020, with another New Year's resolution to do better in 2021, the beauty of the historic Christian calendar is that we're brought back again and again to our only resolution to know nothing except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen? To know nothing except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The the shepherds sought to know the Messiah. After the angels of heaven announced to the shepherds on earth the birth of Messiah, the shepherds go to see this thing which the Lord has made known. What's so fascinating about this is that they were the first to hear the good news. Why is that so fascinating? Because shepherds lived in a perpetual state of ritual uncleanness under Jewish tradition. The saying went something like, if a shepherd offers you a sheep, you can be certain that that sheep was stolen. Yet the shepherds were also the first to respond in worshiping the newborn king. They went with haste, the text tells us, And as they departed to go back to their sheep, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. They worshipped and they witnessed. Their witness led all who heard it to wonder. And while returning to their sheep in the fields, they were glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. Mary sought to know the Messiah as she treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. As believing and hopeful Jews in the coming Messiah, she and Joseph prepared his way by following God's laws. We read the the words that are the theme of this day. At the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, a name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Why? As we've prayed, Almighty God not only made his beloved son, his blessed son, to be circumcised, but he did so that he'd be obedient to the law for man. As Paul says, Messiah Jesus was born under the law of the Lord who gave it to his people, Israel, at Mount Sinai. Why? Because by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight. God the Son became a man to be obedient to the law for man. Because our sinful minds as human beings are hostile to God, do not submit to God's law, cannot submit to God's law, and therefore cannot please God. The Son of God prophesied his own coming, saying, Behold, I have come. I delight to do your will, O my God. To know this Messiah Jesus, who became obedient to the law for man, for you, for me, is to be counted among the blessed, according to Romans chapter 4. To be blessed is to be justified. When David prayed against whom the Lord will not count his sin, he was saying more than just that blessedness is forgiveness, the wiping away of sin, the giving us of a clean slate. The opposite of not having your sins counted against you is to be positively counted righteous. Whose righteousness, though? The Messiah's righteousness, the Messiah's obedience to the law, which we cannot do for us. This blessing is not only for the circumcised, meaning the Jews, but also for the uncircumcised, meaning Gentiles or non-Jews. It's for the whole world. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Paul's proof is that faith, not obedience to the law, was counted to Abraham as righteousness. And when? Paul asks, when did that happen? Before or after he had been circumcised, according to the Lord's command in Genesis 17. It was not after, but before he was circumcised. This means that when he received the sign of circumcision, 
It was as a seal of righteousness that he already had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. And the purpose of this timing of Abraham's circumcision after his faith was to make Abraham the father of all who believe without being circumcised, the Gentiles, so that righteousness would be counted to them, to the world, to you, to me, as well. Abraham is our father too. Paul concludes by saying the promise to Abraham and his offspring did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. In fact, if it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null, and the promise is void. Brothers and sisters, another year is upon us. Let's resolve to know Christ. Let's resolve to rely on him and his obedience to the law for us, for you, for me. And being among the blessed who share his righteousness by faith, let's resolve to pray in faith daily that our Heavenly Father would grant us the true circumcision of the Holy Spirit. And with this circumcision of the Spirit in Christ, let us resolve that our hearts and all our members, being mortified from all worldly and carnal lusts, we may in all things obey our God's blessed will in love for him who came to obey for us, our Lord Jesus Christ. And all of God's people say, Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, who made your blessed Son to be circumcised and obedient to the law for man, grant us the true circumcision of the Spirit, that our hearts and all our members, being mortified from all worldly and carnal lusts, we may in all things obey your blessed will, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and all of God's people say, Amen. May the Lord be with you. Happy New Year, and go with God.